four from the Texas Rangers. Jose Arquiti has a bounce back mound presence. And the Astros have a certain guy named Jose Altuve that did something that he's done before a few other times. That's right. The Astros ended their weekend series looking great against the Rangers and beating up another American League West opponent. Let's talk about it tonight. And welcome to Locked On Astros, your daily Astros podcast. Here are your hosts, Eric the Man Heisman and Brett H Town Wheelhouse Chancy. We are Locked On Houston Astros, and we hope that you join us for a daily Locked On Astros podcast. My name is Eric Heisman. Find me on Twitter, Derek Talks Astros. Find the show at Locked On Astros. Your team every day. Brett, where can you find you at? They can find me at H Town Wheelhouse on Twitter and Instagram, and at Astros four one one on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. Always positive. Love beating up on the Texas Rangers. Always Astros. All right. Yeah, it's always great to take uh, three out of four games, and it was a great series. And it just uh, the Astros just did what it takes to get, get the job done. And speaking of uh, getting getting doing it, uh, blah blah, uh, getting it done. Uh, have you tried Bet Online? Today's episode is brought to you by Bet Online. Bet Online has you covered this season with more props, odds, and lines than ever before. Bet Online, where the game starts. And speaking of that, uh, have you? subscribe to locked on astros podcasts yet if you haven't why haven't you all you have to do is just go to youtube press locked type in locked on astros press the little red button and go and give us like while you're there and go and listen to us on your way to work on your way home from work while you're at work if you want to and just make us your first listen every day on apple odyssey spotify wherever you listen to your podcast go and check out the locked on astros podcast so we're going to talk about what happened in this series um we do have to talk a little bit about Martin Perez uh, kind of dominating the Astros again. Uh, it just seems like uh, he's just, he almost took a perfect game uh, against us earlier this year. Then he throws a complete game against us in this um, series. And then, but the Astros tend to take care of business against the other pitchers. And uh, then we see um, Bregman making some signs that he's about to come out of it, maybe. And he said that um, he's been really bad, but he's finding his swing a little bit. And then Alvarez made a great catch in outfield. And there's a lot of good things that happen. But the best thing that happened, and I want to get started with it, is Jose Kitty having a bounce back start. I mean, he didn't pitch terrible in the last game, but he was very hittable and it just seemed like they made some hard contact last time and this game it's it was a different story he tied his career high and with 10 strikeouts and he just seemed to keep the rangers off their toes or on their toes a little bit and he got the job done in this game and it was a more confident jose kitty out there exactly i mean you know he did give up six hits but he had 10 strikeouts eric i believe is that a career high or it ties, ties a career, career high. it yeah. ties his career high it is excellent because you want them to come out and have this kind of performance you know they did have the one stinker of a game against perez and you know what if you're going to take three out of four i'll take three out of four any day Sweeps are not easy to do unless you're on some massive win streak and everybody's down. We know that the Rangers come to play. Um, the Rangers, though, they really they they came out today. They they got nine hits, but they only had two runs. The Rangers had they were two for seven with the runners in scoring position. The Astros weren't much better. They were three for six, but that's five hundred. I'll take it. But what I love, Eric, is when when I look at the batting line, when I look at the doubles by. Altuve, Bregman, Alvarez, and Curiel, that helps someone like Jose Arquiti. Like, Jose Arquiti's dealing, that's one thing. But if his offense isn't backing him up, it's kind of hard. It's a mental struggle. You know, Justin Verlander doesn't always have the luxury of having a ton of run support. But someone like Jose Arquiti, a younger pitcher, a less seasoned pitcher, it's key for him. And as, look, Johnny Munoz coming in. We haven't seen Johnny Munoz in a while. What's up, Mr. Munoz? He says, Jose Arquiti has a home ERA of 0.98. That's what you need. We have young starting pitchers. You know, over up in New York on the Northeast with the Mets, they have two aging pitchers, and both of them 
are on the shelf right now. And we have young pitchers that are stalwarts, that are thoroughbreds for the most part. And it was excellent to see a 10 strikeout game from Jose Arquiti. And he only did it in six innings. Right. And if you look at Jose Arquiti's career, he is much better at home. He's six and one with a 3.06 ERA. He has 82 strikeouts in 97 innings um, away. He's eight and five with the 4.33 ERA, 85 strikeouts in 114 innings. That's not including today's start. So that's going to improve those numbers. But he's always been a pitcher that just seems to do a lot better at Min Maid Park. Something about maybe home cooking, uh, maybe just um, he didn't stay at a, ho- a Holiday Inn Express last night. He stayed in his own house. So it's just uh, something about Minute Maid Park that he just it brings out the best in him. So uh, so he just it's just better to see this Urquidy versus the one we saw the last two because this is the guy we need in the postseason. So somebody who has the control and the ability to miss bats because that guy was not there last time. He was very hitable, and they had a lot of hard hits uh, last time. No, yeah, definitely. And talking about someone who needed to really um, contribute today was Alex Bregman. He had two walks, Eric, and we can't discount those walks. Um, He got one hit, one run. One of those was a double, and he got an RBI, so he contributed. There have been a lot of people talking about what's wrong with Bregman. Where is he going to um, – are, are we going to – Are we going to trade him? And I'm like, what? Like, people have been freaking out about Alex Bregman. It's like, calm down. This guy is fine. This guy will figure it out. He's even recognized, hey, there's something going on. There's this hitch in my swing. I'm I'm rolling over. I'm inducing ground outs. I'm popping up. I see it. And, you know, if you watch Alex Bregman's swing, I've always thought this, and I, I saw a comment, and I would credit the person that I saw it from if I remembered, but they talked about how stiff his swing is. He does seem to have a really almost too tight of a grip on the bat, it appears. Now, I don't know this because um, I haven't tested his grip strength on the You're bat not a when he's up there. I'm not, I'm not a doctor, Eric. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, man. Don't, hey, dude, don't carve me up today, please. No, but... <laughs> When he's up there swinging, it seems like, and I wonder if him being so tight keeps him from keeping his hands in, and that's what causes the bat path to maybe be altered a bit to induce the ground balls or the pop flies. I'm no hitting coach, but to me, he's always looked real stiff up top, and I mean, he's had success with it, I guess. I just, you know, you always wonder. But what I don't wonder about is that he's continually grinding. He's continually looking for ways to improve, to get better, especially when you're not hitting the way you know you can hit. He's not just going to stop and say, ah, forget it. Um, But again, he got the hit today. Everybody in the lineup, Eric, got a hit. Um, Tucker, well, except for Tucker, McCormick, and Maldonado. But you had six of your nine players getting hits on the day. Yeah. But uh, going, but one second, going back to her kitty, he got 20 swings and misses today and his previous three starts, he had 23 combined. Wow. He got 14 swings against the change ups today. Eight of them were whiffs. So yes, um, Johnny said that he used his change up a lot more. Uh, He threw uh, 75 percent strikes today yeah he was just on top of the game today but if you're going to back to Bregman Bregman said that uh, this was his quote he says I'm pretty good at baseball I just got to make some adjustments every now and then I come through I was pretty bad the last week to 10 days I felt better today and uh, that's, so, but that's what you want. You you want progression. And like in teaching, Eric, whenever we get test scores and we look at where kids are and where they were, it's not necessarily about making that 100 on the test. It's about if they made an 85, then they make an 88. And that's what and that's what we're talking about here. It's a process. It's a it's not a sprint. It's a marathon. And like Mr. Garcia says here, you're not in Yuli with back to back doubles. How key is it to see someone like Yuli Guriel get a double right after Jordan Alvarez today? Yeah. And it's just like they're building on the success of just each other. And it, just to see Alvarez, I mean, not Alvarez, but Yuli starting to build on his success. And if Bregman starts doing it, watch out. And we'll talk a little bit more about that in a second. But let's talk a little bit about Bill Bar. So Built Bar is the best tasting protein bar on the land. They have these uh, they have these brownie batter puffs. And like 
I get tongue tied saying it sometimes because I know how good they are. And this excitement for Built Bars is not manufactured. It's not some act. Like you can literally go to my cabinet. You can look at my lunchbox every day. I have a Built Bar. And what I love are these Built Puffs. They are protein infused marshmallow puffs wrapped in 100% chocolate. But it's not just any protein. Nay, it is collagen protein. Why is that great? Because it actually allows your body to absorb it more effectively. So if you're on the go, if you're working out, if you're traveling, whatever it is you're doing, Built Bars are the great, the great tasting, satisfying, healthy alternative to candy bars and other protein bars. Let me give you the stats on these bad boys. 140 calories, 17 grams of protein, 7 grams of sugar for these built batter for these brownie batter puffs and they're a perfect pick me up. The brownie batter puff will have you completely forgetting that you are eating a protein bar. No need to pinch yourself. This is real life. So go to built.com and get brownie batter puffs today. Go to built.com, use the promo code LOCKS15. That's 15% off for your order. That's right. Use the promo code LOCKS15 for 15% off at built.com. All righty. And thank you for making Locked On Astros podcast your first listen every day. And uh, you know what else you should check out? The Locked On Now podcast. They do a great job of putting together all the nows from around the network. Just talking about, yay, we won. Yay. or Sorry, nay, we lost. And they, uh, it's just a great way of just seeing what's going around this great sport of baseball in like uh, 15 minutes or less. And just go check out the Locked On Now podcast. They do a great job of doing it. So uh, let's just go and take a look at this Astros game today. And uh, if you look at the top distances, um, it's kind of uh, misleading because the top distance was Alvarez. Then you have Kyle Tucker. At uh, so Alvarez was 411, 368, Kyle Tucker, then um, Corey Seager at 367, then Marcus Simeon at 365, Mitch Garber at 361. You might be wondering where Jose Altuve's home run was because it's not even on that list. Well, <laughs> let's think about where it was. Where does he usually hit the ball to what field, left yeah. or right field? He's, he normally goes to left field, so I know. Yeah, he goes to left field. I mean, I know, but what's over there? The Crawford boxes, right? Yes. That is a blessing. It helps us, I think, more than it hurts us. But, man, when the other team hits it out on that side, it's brutal. Yes, and so, um, of course, Mitch Garber's was a home run, and I'm trying to find out where uh, – there's Jose Tubis. That was actually 353 – feet homer it was a um, 94.4 mile per hour off the bat at launch angle at 36 miles per hour but it was off um it was off of pitch number five i think that's what that is is that what the pa is but um so anyway but um, i'm not looking at i don't know uh, it's fine but um it, Altuve just does what he does. He just has that knack for hitting that home run at the leadoff home run. And it just gets it. It it means so much for a pitcher just to, to have that lead right away. I mean, I know that, um, that, that our kitty had to pitch first in that situation, but just to have that lead in the first place, it just, uh, it's good to have that. And then for the Astros to add more as they went on and, um, they added uh, one more in the third inning. Then, uh, then our kitty added the one. They allowed the one run in the fifth inning. Then the Astros added two more. So even when our kitty allowed that one run, the Astros said, "Okay, we you got your one. We'll give you two more." Yeah, exactly. And I mean, he did. He did put up a. Um, he put up a zero in that in that first inning, I believe. And so with with Jose Altuve getting that lead off, I mean, they pretty much had the lead the entire game. They never relinquished the lead because when they got the one run, um, they were already, it was already two to one. They had kind of cut the lead in half. But with that being said, um, you, you need your pitchers, not only your starting pitcher, but you need your remaining pitchers to come in and do good work. So you had Montero, Stanek, Taylor, all three come in and, and they each had a strikeout. Now Presley came in and he gave up a couple hits. I'll talk about that here in a second. But one of the things I have up here on the board that the people listening can't see is that the bus driver says this. And those doubles, talking about Yuli and both Jordan, their doubles were off of two out scenarios. And seeing the team get hits with two outs 
um, that is key. If you go back and look at the 2021 stats with runners in scoring position, the Houston Astros had the highest batting average and had the second most hits with runners in scoring position with runners in scoring position for the 2021 season. I haven't seen the totals this year. I've been having a hard time finding that for 2022, but they were definitely one of the top teams why they were so successful in getting to the World Series. That's going to be a key factor because you see today the Angels won, so they are still only a game and a half up on the Angels. The Angels continue to keep pace with the Astros. The Mariners are falling off. The Rangers are who they are, and the A's are, like, why are we even talking about them? It's us and the Angels. It's it's a it's a two horse race this entire season, Eric. And the Astros just have to continue to do the things that win you team baseball. Whether it's a leadoff home run from Jose, a double from Yuli, um, a walk from Bregman, or ten strikeouts from your pitcher, all those things are a formula for success. And Pena doing what he's doing. He got two more hits today. And exactly. yeah, the other two at bats were strikeouts, but you overlook that. He's uh, batting 286 on the season with a 851 OPS. Yes. And as um, as Jay Roberts brings up, that Altuve's average is all the way up to 283. Uh, and it just shows how hot a player can get. And so since he's come back from the injury, He's been uh, hot. The Astros have been hot. So it's just amazing what um, time can do. Bregman, if he can get hot, and if Guriel can get hot, then this team can be unstoppable. Just imagine this team is rolling like they are, yet they got shut out by Martin Perez on Saturday. But who uh, he? this guy is pitching lights out right now, and he came in with a two-something ERA. He lowered his ERA to one-something, and so – it's just impressive what he's doing, and anybody could have signed him this offseason. The Rangers just happened to do it. So, but uh, if Bregman and Guriel start hitting somehow, this team will be unstoppable. And then if Jake Myers comes back, then watch out. Uh, you don't need Martin Maldonado and Jason Castro to do anything. You would like for them to do something. Exactly. But you don't need for them to do anything. You want, you want Martin to hit his home runs occasionally. Um, but like TB Murphy says, the Angels don't have the pitching depth that we have, and that's and that's a very correct assessment. The starting pitching is where the Angels lack overall versus us. And, you know, Lance McCullers will come back at some point. He's starting to throw kind of off of the front part of the mound, not the full mound yet. J- Jake Odorizzi has had this miraculous, like, he's back. And Dusty Baker's like, it's a miracle. And – so you have a solid six-man rotation that's going to be intact here pretty soon. They're not going to rush McCullers back. But can you imagine a full-strength McCullers rested who hasn't b- burned any of his arm strength or any of his pitches up until when he comes in? So maybe the blessing is in the curse. Um, Jeremy Pena, as a rookie, is leading all rookies in pretty much every off- offensive category. He's getting the job done in the field with this glove. This kid is a born leader, Eric. He is a born superstar. And I think the conversation needs to begin on May 23rd, on Monday, that Jeremy Pena is a serious contender for American League Rookie of the Year. I don't care that it's not halfway through the season. Somebody needs to start talking about it more and more because I haven't heard a whole lot from Bobby Witt Jr. I haven't heard a whole lot from Rodriguez, and I sure haven't heard anything from Torkelson up in Detroit. Now, there are some rookie pitchers, I can't think of their name off the top of my head, that are doing really well, but Jeremy Pena is the real deal. Yeah, and uh, Alvarez, he's looking great in left field. I'm just watching the play that he made um, in the fourth inning. He ran to, there's like a little nook uh, right in front of the visitor's bullpen, and he ran, uh, Corey Seager's at the plate, and it went, ran right by the waste management sign in between the Chevrolet and he ran in, in between the little nook and made a catch. And uh, that's something that you wouldn't think that somebody like him would make. But as we were talking before the show, he has proven that he is a better defender than we give him credit for. Yeah. yeah. He's going to, he's not going to reach every ball that somebody like Chaz McCormick or um, even Michael Brantley m- might reach, but he's going to, he's going to make a valiant effort for everything. This is not this shaky knee guy. He was last year. This is somebody who's fully recovered. And it, remember during off season when he was uh, doing a treadmill and we're like, okay, yeah, he's going to be ready for the season. He looks ready. Right. 
Well, so I think it's funny that you that you defer to Michael Brantley as an example of running down and not Kyle right. Tucker. <laughs> no, Kyle okay. Tucker is in right field. No, hey, no, hey, I'm joking. I'm talking about left field. Brantley, I know. I'm just saying. I know. I, no, Hold I'm just. Horses. No, I'm talking about just running the ball down itself. Anyways, I, I'm Kyle just, Tucker I'm just, is one of the best defenders out there. I'm not even putting him in the category. I'm just saying that left fielders. No, that's what no, I'm saying. You're, you're totally missing my point. No, I, I, I got your point. Okay. Anyways, all right. So, <laughs> so, so here's the deal. Um, Jordan Alvarez. If you watched him run the bases when he hit that triple the other day, I mean, he was hauling around he was hauling butt around the bases and people still treat him like you said and like you and i talked about before people do still treat him like oh he had knee replacement surgery we got to be careful with him no you don't this kid's young he like what so like do we just wrap our athletes in bubble wrap now because it's 2022 and we're super cautious i think the more cautious you are i think the more you protect a player you actually psychologically may cause more injuries, okay? And, I mean, think about it. Think about football and rugby. Let's just use that as an example. Rugby, no pads. Rugby, full-on tackling. Which sport, football or rugby, do you think has more injuries? Just off the top of your head. Um, Don't know much about rugby, but I'm going to say football. Football does have more injuries, but you know what? Football also has more padding. Football has more rules. Football has all this. They're trying to make everything safe. Rugby, there aren't as many rules, and you just full-on just freaking truck people without pads, no helmets or anything. Is that the one where they get in a circle and they dance? Yes. No, they don't (laughs) dance. That's the salsa on the H-E-B commercial with the Astros. We'll have to talk about that later. No, but my point is this. I think sometimes when clubs baby players too much or try to be too cautious, you get into their head and that's when injuries happen. When you try to just not just let the guy go, let the kid, yes, a scrum, let the kid out, let, let the horse out of the barn. I mean, this is a, this guy is very much a major, a a major league outfielder. Michael Brantley's not going to be here for long. OK, right. And I mean, he may have a couple more years and I hope he's here as long as he can. But my point is this. Jordan Alvarez is full on deserves to play left field as much as humanly possible. Um, I forgot to mention that that was Jose Altuve's fifth leadoff home run this season and his 26 wow. of his career. So That's he amazing. is he is um, creating a record. I mean, not records, but he's uh, creating his own name in Astros history. Oh, and yeah. I don't know if he'll ever reach um, Biggio, but um, we'll see. He's got some other people to pass before he gets a Biggio. I believe I, I don't know off the top of my head what Springer's was, but I think, I think Springer, Springer. Yeah, Springer had thirty one. If I remember correctly, Springer, off had, top of my head. Springer was in the thirties. Um, yeah. Biggio was like sixty something, wasn't he? Yeah, like sixty-four so, yeah, home runs got, or something like something that. Something like that. We'll have to look it up for another show, but it's going up there. But uh, yeah, but one thing I do want to talk about before we talk about HEB commercials is the fact that we saw um, we saw that um, that Jaco Rizzi was taking not only throwing; he wasn't just doing a light catch, but he was actually doing a wind up today. So that was a pretty big um, there, and also we saw uh, that that Lance McCullers actually uh, t- took some pitches off the um, bullpen mound, I believe. And it wasn't like full, but he did. Um, it was on the edge of the mound. It was, he yes. said, he said, because it feels different when you're pitching off the dirt, but you don't go the full incline because you want to test things. I mean, I didn't realize Eric, how much when they bring a pitcher back from an injury, how much they watch that. Like in my mind, I'm like, Hey kid, get on the mound and throw a few pitches. Apparently that's like not the right right avenue to go and probably why I'm not the team doctor, right? Right. Yeah, definitely. But he said that uh, James Click was watching and uh, he threw 10 pitches about a foot or two in front of the rubber, including some off speed, keeping his velocity at about 80. And that he said, I'm definitely encouraged. And uh, also um, – James Click said that Jake's feeling really good, still working on making sure all the soreness is gone from the tendon down there in the leg and asked about timeline. No, not yet. We're just hope, hoping it's very short. So I think they're going to be very, 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 very cautious with him. 
And uh, McCullough said, I'm, I'm definitely encouraged. This is something that's a little bit of a finicky injury because of where it is. Knowing that my elbow feels good and we're moving the right direction, it's all very encouraging. So everything seems to be encouraging. Uh, just hopefully that I don't think they're going to rush either one of these guys no. back because McCullers, as much as they would like him back in a rotation, uh, they would like to have him in any form or fashion, but they're not going to risk him furthering injuring him where they could have surgery. They'll keep him out for maybe next year or two. So yeah, uh, they're, no, they're, they're, gonna, they're gonna be cautious with him. No, yeah, definitely. And and one of the things I kind of want to talk about, because I, I hinted with it earlier, and we have someone that asked a question. He says, do you think, do we think that Presley is that good? I think the Astros do not have an elite closer. This is what the commenter's saying, at least not yet. I know Presley makes a lot of money. Now, Ryan Presley, I think the problem with evaluating a, a pitcher, okay, a closer, is everything's under a microscope. Anytime he gives up a hit. Anytime he doesn't have a clean inning, like he doesn't strike out the side or get three outs without putting someone on base, everybody wants to automatically say, well, this person is an elite. I think Brian Presley, when he's when he's 100% healthy, when he's in the groove, he has shown us that he is an elite closer in this league. The Astros didn't keep him here because they didn't think he could get the job done. You also have someone like Hector Neres, Eric, who has come in and done some spot saves here and there whenever Preston Montero was has to. You have you have Rafael Montero. Those two guys right there, I think, keep the pressure off of Presley. I think Presley is fine. I know he does tend to give up, it seems like, more hits than he should be. But if he's a closer. Guys are going to get hits against him. As long as he's not blowing saves, as long as he's not giving up a tie and things like that, I think it's fine. I wouldn't I wouldn't throw Presley out and say that he's not elite. I just think there's a lot of people who are a little iffy on him. But you've got to remember, it's a small sample size. You can't, you know, a starting pitcher can have two or three or four bad innings, right? But still yeah. have a decent start. Presley, he's got one chance. And so... We have to maybe temper because he is one of the elite closers, I believe. Do you think he is, Eric? Um, I think he can be. I think what's going on this year is that Dusty Baker has not used him that much. And so he, at times he can be a little rusty. He can come in and not have his best stuff. Uh, I know he had a bad spring training, and I know his uh, fastball has been down a little bit this year. We've seen him kind of go up a little bit more but it's still not where it needs to be. And so give him some time. I'm not worried about him at all. Uh, I think if we see him start to falter, I think the Astros have shown, especially with, uh, I can't remember his name anymore, uh, Pedro Baez. They've shown that if you're not doing the job, then if you're not getting the job, then they're going to do something. But um, uh, yeah, definitely. Uh, I want to talk about Christian Javier in a second, but um Thank you for this comment. Uh, Jonathan uh, says that you guys are my number one co uh, podcast. First time I catch you guys live. Stroh's love from Puerto Rico. Yes. Nice. We got some we got some Puerto Rican listeners watching us live. We appreciate y'all. We appreciate everybody. I mean, seriously, when I look at the different countries that watch us, Eric, the different states, the different cities within within Texas, um, it's it's mind boggling and. That's, I mean, this is why we do what we do because we want you guys to get the best Astros content that is out there. So Eric and I take a lot of pride and we really, it means a lot for us for you to say that. Thank you. All right. So what uh, Martin Perez did against the Astros on, what was that Friday night now, or was that Saturday night? I don't remember anymore. So, uh, okay. Oh, I'm sorry. Ask your question again. Was uh, when Martin Perez was that Friday night that he shut us out? Yeah, that's Friday night, wasn't it? Yes, it was. Yes. It was Friday because because the Justin Verlander game was Saturday. Yeah, that's right. And, and the reason why I remember that is because a buddy of mine actually went to the game and he goes, "I've never seen Verlander pitch. I just hope that Verlander pitches really well because I want to see a classic Verlander game." And man, Verlander was looked good. Yeah. Yeah, so we'll talk about him in a second, but uh, Christian Javier, he pitched a heck of a game on Friday night, and unfortunately, it he was did. a losing effort. He did have nine strikeouts, and uh, the Astros rotation is looking good again, and it's, um, I know on Friday, 
the Astros couldn't do anything against Perez and he, um, uh, Perez pitched nine innings. He did allow eight hits and allowed and one walk. He had five strikeouts. He only threw 108 pitches <laughs> and with all that traffic, nine innings, it was, it was a kind of a weird game, but he lowered his ERA down to 1.64. But Christian Javier with his effort is his ERA is at 2.87. So he looks like a starter. This guy looks like he should be a starter. He had a nine strikeouts and he looks good. Justin Verlander uh, with another shutout. Um, so he's looking good. And it just looks like the Astros starters are doing what they're supposed to do overall. So I don't, I think he gave it, he, he had a shutout, right? Um, Verlander. Yes, yes, he did not give up shutout, any Yeah, right. So he yes. had eight strikeouts and in six innings, lowering his ERA to one point point two. He finally is six and one. And then uh, Naris gave up that one run, and then you had Presley come in. So yeah, Presley was used three out of four games, like Johnny Munoz uh, pointed out. But before this series, he was not used a lot. No, exactly. You know, when you when you talk about the pitching staff, when you look at things like weighted on base average for pitching staffs in the league, Eric, with guys like Verlander, with guys like, you know, Javier, their entire starting pitching staff, they are tied currently right now with the with the Angels. They are top three percent in the league, and that is phenomenal. They are top seven percent with weighted on base average when it comes to they're pitchers, okay? Um, it is it is awesome to see that this team is just simply getting the job done. Um, you know, the Angels have actually given up 10 more home runs than our pitchers, Eric, and you'd love to see that. So at the end of the season, I think we're going to look back on this season and we're going to say there were maybe some question marks coming in. We had the rough start by Oda Rizzi. We had him heat up when and then the injury. We had Lance go down with the injury early. But but Justin Verlander came back. And Justin Verlander seems to be the catalyst for this entire pitching staff. I guarantee having him in the dugout, having him there in his presence is definitely a huge help. Not only that, Eric, you have Jeremy Pena, who seems to be the complete package. Like you said, this team, guys, has not even hit its stride. When Christian Javier starts getting run support, when they start actually giving Justin Verlander more than a couple runs of run support, I mean, the sky's the limit with this team. I know the Yankees have the better record right now. We are second, you know, record-wise in the AL. They've really played a lot of bottom-feeding teams. Now, they almost got no hit perfect game against the White Sox tonight. And so that was kind of fun to see the Yankees not winning um, because they're playing really good baseball. But the Astros haven't even begun to scratch the surface of how good they can be. Yeah, and um, we're not going to go into that, but it was uh, pretty interesting seeing that whole uh, episode with um... – no, I'm not going to talk about it, but the whole episode with the White Sox versus the uh, Yankees, and it's just so stupid how people can be. And um, so, uh, but anyway, it just uh, let's go ahead and talk about what's uh, up next for the Astros. Uh, they are uh, playing who? Um, They're playing the Cleveland Guardians. Um, former Miles Straw, um, Astro Miles Straw, current Gold Glove winner Miles Straw. And the um, the the Guardians are actually 17 and 20. They're playing below 500. They are in the AL Central. The AL Central is pretty much the Twins and everybody else right now at this point. The White Sox haven't really hit their stride, and so um, and th the they Guardians. Don't know who's pitching tomorrow? Well, but here's the thing: the Guardians have some hitters. Um, the Guardians have some rookies. Um, they're not a terrible team. They're three games under 500. Um, they've scored 171 runs. They've had 166 runs scored against them. They have a plus five run differential. They are four and six in their last 10. So they're not coming in hot. I'm not too worried about the series. This is a series that I think because Bieber just pitched. And so they probably won't see Bieber. He's been their best pitcher this year. That is probably a relief for us. Um, Naylor has been good this year. They have um, Soto. Oh, I'm sorry, that was for Detroit. Um, but Bieber, even though he had 10 Ks, he actually got the loss. He's only one and three, but you're not going to see their ace when they come to town. 
Yeah, so I think that this is going to be a series. I mean, they typically play well uh, against the Astros, and it'll be good to see Miles Straw come back. And I don't know why we have this affinity affinity for Miles Straw. Maybe I uh, just he, because... he's a he's a good player. Yeah, in a regular season where you didn't have competition in the center field position, he would have been an Astro. He would still be an Astro today. He remember he won a Gold Glove. He he's not just some. I think a lot of people doubted his his ability to become an everyday major league all star caliber player. And although he's not all star yet, he has that potential. He can run down anything hit to him. He can get on base. He can steal bases. He's a complete player. He's a hard working, scrappy kid from Florida. And I I just I just think because people liked him, he was just this down home kid. And I, I think he kind of got done wrong, to be honest with you, on his way out. It, it was just he wasn't really treated super fairly. The Astros brass had their favorite. And, you know, that's as they say, that's baseball. Uh, apparently, uh, Tristan McKenzie, according to Albert, is maybe going to be on the mound today. But I'm not seeing that on MLB.com. But uh, we'll see. Uh, but uh, def- here's what Miles Straw is doing on this season. He's batting 246, no home runs. Eight stolen bases, 665 OPS, but uh, he's going to he's re- gonna be remembered for climbing up the wall and yelling at the Yankees fan for going after one of his players. Now, so. are they going to do a tribute video for him? Because they did tribute, they did a tribute video for Toro. I mean, ha- wait, has has Miles Straw been back to to Minute Maid? Um, was it I, I wasn't don't it wasn't so. it last year? Wasn't it last year? They, anyways, I don't know. I'm just, I just know that like everybody's going to be like Astros legend. They kind of overstate it, you know, in this day of social media, um, everything's a little overstated to say the least. But I, Eric, I, I think the Astros come into this series and I think they handle the Guardians quite handedly. And, you know, you have on, um, on the 24th on Tuesday, Framber, um, you have on Monday night, who is the starting pitcher for us? It is Luis Garcia. And yeah. then, and then Wednesday you have what, who is her as a starting pitcher Wednesday? Do we have it up? It uh, is, yeah. Hold on. Yes, it is Christian Javier. So, yeah. Wow. That's a, that's a, that's a quick turnaround for Christian Javier. And then I assume the next game that's played, it would be uh, Justin Verlander, but um, I think it's gonna be a good series. It's gonna be a fun series. They're they're all evening games. There's not a single day game. I was kind of thinking they would squeeze a day game in there um, during one of the three games, but they're all in the evening. And so let's just see the Astros at the end of this be thirty and fifteen. That would be nice. Yeah, that would be awesome to see uh, them just get three wins. But you can't assume they're going to w- get wins because they're all Major League Baseball players. Um, I believe that Framer Valdez is pitching the Tuesday game, and then Chris Javier. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah, it's yeah, it's Luis Garcia Monday. Okay. Um, yeah, that's what I said. Yeah. Okay. Cool. All right. So um, yeah. So hopefully this is a great series. But that's all we got for this edition of the Locked On Astros podcast. We did a special. Um, episode with uh, facing Nolan with uh, Jackson Ryan, uh, Nolan Ryan's grandson. It is going to be live pretty soon. Make sure you check that out. And it's a, it's a great look at the uh, movie that's coming out pretty soon. So make sure you go check that out. It's going to be on YouTube. It's going to be Apple Odyssey, Spotify. And it, uh, it was a great look at what it's like being the grandson of Nolan Ryan and a look into the movie, uh, how the, family had an influence into it and when thinks about the movie also go uh, make sure you go check out the, the uh, locked on astros podcast looking at facing Nolan ryan the movie comes out on the 24th so go check that out and um that's all we got for this ep- episode i'm glad the astros uh, took care of business versus the texas rangers and it uh, looks like the silver boot is on our way on the way to the astros like that matters and it's a little too early to be calling that a silver uh, boot parade Yes, definitely. Um, So that's all we got for this edition of the Lockdown Astros podcast. We'll catch you guys tomorrow. Go Astros!